Awesome. Thank you, Stephen. And um, I'm Flavio, CEO of iMedicare. Uh, definitely want to thank these guys for organizing it and having us here because um, it's definitely a segment of the population that's growing and a huge market opportunity. We've certainly uh, done great so far and continue to grow. So thank you for having these sort of events. It's awesome. As you might know, there are 45 million people on Medicare, and every day that number is growing by another 10,000 people. Um, how many, each year, each year, which one of these people has to go on a, and select a Medicare plan, whether it's for their prescription drugs, a Part D, or a Medicare Advantage plan, or a supplement plan? Who's ever helped or had to do this themselves, ever uh, help compare Medicare plans? Go to Medicare.gov, try to sift through numbers of pages for hours on end and try to figure out which of the 50 different plans that might vary by thousands of dollars a year um, are best for whether it's your, yourself, your mother, your grandmother. So that's, that's what we do. We make that process a lot simpler. We put it on an iPad and it looks like this, so I can have a live demo on here, but basically it takes two minutes now to compare Medicare plans. We tie into the pharmacy's computer systems to pull your medications and be able to estimate costs, and so you never have to do all that typing in and adding drugs one by one. It takes two minutes. We're in nearly 600 pharmacies now, have helped thousands of patients select their Medicare plan. We are uh, happy to be a profitable healthcare IT startup <coughs> in uh, part of the Blueprint Health, still working out of there in Soho. So, and also you're able to enroll in a plan right on there, so that saves you from, or your mother, grandmother, from having to call up a broker and try to get uh, steered into the plan that the broker gets commissioned on. Now you can actually uh, make uh, the best decision for you, not the best decision for the broker. So. That's what we do, and definitely take uh, more questions about this, but I wanted to spend just one minute to talking about sort of the lessons we learned as we approached this market. Uh, intuitively, we started off thinking that uh, we're on an iPad, we're only an iPad app, so we intuitively started thinking there's no way seniors are going to use tablets and technology, and uh, we were wrong. Uh, thousands of seniors later, we found we're constantly surprised by how advanced they are in terms of using technology, tablets, smartphones, and if they don't use it, it's probably our fault as the technology people not making it easy enough and simple enough for them to use. Uh, because again, I've seen it, and this picture kind of shows it, they show great interest in products that add value to what they're doing, and they're easy and simple to use. So. With that said, we also learned that they're not going to go out of their way to make sure they use your app and stay healthy and uh, exercise. And they're not, they're not going to take the extra step if you don't make it easy. And that's not just like everybody else, right? We, we can't expect, and this is the lesson. We were at the AARP uh, convention. We were privileged to be there in the Tech Expo presenting with a number of other startups. And there's about 30 of us showing all these cool apps in healthcare, IT, everything, right? And there were probably 20, 30,000 seniors there walking by, sort of showing some interest, but glazing by and then keep on walking to spend like six hours in the you know, cafeteria in the casino eating uh, pizza and french fries. So it almost seemed like a disconnect between all these startups thinking like, oh, why aren't you interested in our new cool health tracking, you know, monitoring app? Well, you know, I'm going to the slot machines to eat some pizza. So, you know, I think I think there's a lot we can do to to bridge those gaps there and use technology uh, and focus on the things that you know they might take interest in. So, one of those things we found is saving money. So, if we uh, focus on how can we add, how can you save more money, budget more more appropriately, whatever it is in your particular environment, and ours is saving money on insurance and Medicare. That helps, that brings their attention because they can save hundreds of dollars on a Medicare plan, they're interested. Now your app or service, in our case, becomes a lot more interesting when you can save that much. Um, connecting with your family, I've seen this in a number of startups that are super interesting and in how uh, they can do a better job of uh, meeting the great interest 
our parents, grandparents have in uh, connecting with us, <laughs> with their children and grandchildren, and and I love technology that, that, that does that, and so do as, as we've seen many many seniors. Um, but they don't like being confused, as you see here, paper, whether it's technology, uh, overwhelming, you know, boxes and check boxes, and 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 that's definitely something to stay away from, as, as well as you know, people um, underestimating their intelligence. Um, or taking advantage, being taken advantage of it in some way uh, because of some, somebody undermining their intelligence. So I think those, those key lessons are what for, for us have been, have been guiding to make sure that we, we sort of strive to take whatever unhappy, every unhappy senior and, and use <laughs> technology to, uh, it's a very difficult task though, definitely worth endeavoring in and perfecting to take our technology skills and experiences and turn confused, unhappy seniors into happy seniors. So with that challenge, I leave you. Thank you very much, um, Flavio. All right. So, so how many users do you have and how do you find them? Yeah, we sell to independent pharmacies. I don't know if you've seen them around. There's a lot more pharmacies out there than CVS and Walgreens that a lot of seniors go to. A third of all pharmacies are independent. And so they're the ones that often get these sort of questions because seniors trust their pharmacists uh, more than their, even their doctor. So we uh, approach the pharmacies and give them tools uh, because they're the ones that often end up spending that time on Medicare.gov or the family. So we help them help the senior. Uh, so how do we find them? You know, at first I just drove to every independent pharmacy I could find. Uh, now we go to conferences. We've partnered with... Uh, a number of pharmacy organizations. So yeah, we're in almost 600 pharmacies, and they each help about 100 seniors a year compare Medicare plans. Can you talk a little bit about your business model and how that works? Yeah, we have uh, two ways we make money. One is a subscription service from the pharmacy to use our service. The other is on some plans we are brokers, so we make commissions when a patient enrolls in some of the plans. <coughs> Yeah, we show all the plans and we uh, are in good terms on, with CMS to make sure it's the most uh, unbiased comparison it can be and uh, our, our interests are always tied with the patient and then the pharmacy to help the patient. Okay, great, thanks. And can you introduce who you are? Uh, Jim Collins, uh, Virginia Committee on Aging. You are getting my drug information from a pharmacy? Right, so the pharmacy... What? I mean, where is privacy? I'm, I'm sorry. I don't quite get this model. Well, the, we don't get it. The pharmacists get it, Sid. So when you walk they're in... They're sharing it with you without my permission? No, they're sharing it with, with you. We're just the technology that transfers it from the pharmacy to your hands in the How iPad. How are you getting it? Whose permission? That's what I, I don't understand. With you. the pharmacy's permission. So you, so you ask... As an individual, you would ask the pharmacy for help, and the pharmacy would then say, we have this solution, would you like to use it? And if they do like to use it, then then it gives you the permission? Is that how it works? Right. So the pharmacy going to come to me first before they share it with you? Yeah, they're going to get your permission. You didn't say that presentation. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. One question I have is, beside Medicare, as this uh, health information exchange is coming through, do you have a plan to address for other consumers besides Medicare? Yeah, that's a great idea. You're absolutely right. And we're still waiting to, to see how that plays out because uh, if all of a sudden the pharmacies we work with do get a lot of those questions, which they probably will, it's something um, we'll go ahead and add. Right now, there's only a few uh, sources outside of CMS that have that data, but as it becomes prevalent here in October, in about a month, we'll, we'll find out and see. Yeah. But just a follow up, but right now your business model is work with the pharmacist, not the other healthcare provider. Is that correct? That's correct because the most confusing and highest cost piece of this is Part D, uh, prescription drug, because of the donut hole when the patient might end up paying five times more for their medications for those months. So that's, that's okay. why. Another quick question. So Helen and then in back. Helen, go. 
I don't know how quickly the time passed, but I find myself at 85, and I want to uh, have the, the current uh, uh, equipment that you who have all the technology are using. So I went to T-Mobile to buy a cell phone. I didn't want to buy, I didn't want to get a phone that just you answer and, and that's all it does because I see what you guys have and it seems so fabulous. On a smartphone. <laughs> a smart smartphone, yeah. So I went to T-Mobile and I said I want a Samsung Galaxy 4. And he said, why do you want that phone? <laughs> 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 you know, you know, you know, you promise you that. <laughs> and they, is that, thank you. So yeah, in the middle of the interview. Well, I kind of curious what the revenue model is. Is there a price point? What do I pay for as a user? And secondly, it seems like you started this whole thing with what is a better marketing plan, which is how many people here have had to help their parents or their grandparents? How are you talking to me? Yeah, that's a, that's a great point because you're right. We currently do not have a direct-to-consumer model, so if you wanted to use this right now, you couldn't. But what you can do is go to your nearest pharmacy, and they'll help you. And the reason that is is that's because... only if I meet you. <laughs> what? It's only if I meet you in this room. Or if you happen to pick up your prescriptions, because you're not you in this room, and then I went to pick up my prescriptions. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, um, what was I'm, your other I'm question? Not gonna, my point is, how would I know? You wouldn't, but if you if you go to your pharmacy, come the enrollment period, and, and wonder, hey, uh, is there anything you can do? Or you can see a sign, hey, we help you save money on Medicare. The reason a pharmacist is especially qualified to help you, there's more than you know a family member or a broker, is that they understand uh, restrictions around plans. I got it. this is a brilliant idea. Find a venture cap guy in this room and get money for marketing, because the rest is is a no brain. Final okay. comment, Tom, then we got to move on. Yeah, I have a quick question for you, and that is, you know, I would imagine that a significant part of, or if not the largest part of your market share would come from people who were choosing their initial Medicare plan, initial Medicare plan at age 65. So I'm curious as to why all the people in your presentation look like they're 85, <laughs> 90, and 95. It doesn't speak to anybody I know who is 65, it doesn't look remotely really like I would, uh, so here's, uh, here's one little known fact is that every uh, year plans change. Your formulary changes, your coverage changes, the prices change, and the average senior can save $800 a year just by making sure right. every that, year. That may be, but how are you going to reach them if you're speaking to people who are a generation older than them? <coughs> All right, I'm, that might... I'm not trying to reach them. I'm just reaching the pharmacies. Uh, and everybody picks up their prescriptions. So, uh, some, good, some good return of the questions for. You need more uh, pictures of pharmacists. Awesome. There we go. Thank you, Flash. Thank you. Thank you.